Okay, good morning grade six. I am trying to do a voiceover today instead of making a video live for you. Um, I'm here on the Google Classroom. I'm going to talk to you about my expectations for this week and the week after and blogging. Um, we see Mrs. Wilkie's library at the top there of our Google Classroom. We also see Ms. Einan's uh, section there of the Google Classroom and we have Mrs. Panis's section. Um, I am collaborating with your special teachers. We also have Reading Gems. Um, there is a COVID-19 book that I highly recommend reading. Your general questions is updated for this week as well. Don't forget to use that. So I see the RL Week 5 assignments and um, when I click on the RL Week 5 assignments, I see this assignment tracker and I've opened it up and each of you have a copy of this. Um, it looks a little bit different from your last assignment tracker for the people of Sparks. That was a game board. This is a little bit easier to read in my opinion. Um, and we see that I'm having a little bit of trouble highlighting the text there. Um, it was my first time using my laptop as a tablet. Um, so the keyboard kept popping up. But on the side, I've commented um, that when you're done with the week's um, assignments, you are putting that emoji check mark and copying and pasting it, okay? So I'm scrolling down, I see all the assignments all the way up to May 4th, okay? So I planned ahead for you so you know what's coming. Most of these blog posts are, um, at first, we're going to be responding to videos about media literacy, and I'll show you what I mean when I click the Media Literacy Student blog, which is a Google site that I created. On this first page, we see news sources. Um, these are news websites that you know are probably different from ones you've seen. I have archive sources like from libraries and culture resources. At the bottom, I have my Creative Commons license on that page. We have the basics of blogging here. I have a how to write a blog post for beginner bloggers, a video, short one. And I have a blog post writing guide with some steps there for you to look at. And then I have a Creative Commons search tool. I'm going to show you how to use that now. Um, Creative Commons is a tool that allows you to use images off of the internet. Um, when you do a Google search, if you do not um, use a free image, you're actually using copyrighted material. So I want to be careful when we are blogging that you're not using copyrighted material without giving the creator the attribution, which I'll show you when I search this cat image. I prefer personally to search for illustrations. I tried to search this one. It looks good. I'm going to right click and save the image. And I see that it's actually an SNG file, which is not the correct file. What I'm looking for is a PNG or a JPEG. So I'm still looking for one that I like, loading more results. And I did stop at the unicorn cat for a minute. And I'm going to right click and save the image. Now I see it's a PNG image and I rename it cat. And I save it to my computer. On your Chromebook, when you save images, um, you will need to look for the image in your downloads folder. Right now I'm showing you the license, the attribution. CAT is licensed under CC01.0. That's what I need you to put under your image, which I'll show you uh, your blog post template in a minute. For the rubric, there are a few different points that I'll use to um, grade and assess your blog post. Um, I am doing this similarly to how I graded your Review questions for people of Sparks, complete, incomplete, no attempt. Okay, so we have um, examples, blog post text features, conventions, right? So I'm highlighting for you everything you need. Um, so you should go over that rubric yourself. The biggest piece for me is all features of a blog post are included. So you have a catchy blog post title, one or more embedded hyperlinks, and um, related content like a photo. Okay. A blog post is different from writing an essay or a narrative. Here we have the same due dates, but they're on the website instead. Okay, and I go over each of the due dates through the website. We have this fake out game, which a lot of you have already played. I posted this to Google Classroom as well. 
Um, you are given stories and you have to thumbs up or thumbs down whether or not you think they're true or false. Right, so this is a resource for us to learn a little bit about fake news and how it's spread. Part of us learning about media literacy is understanding the spread of fake news, which is especially relevant to right now um, during our stay-at-home order. We have um, another one from Photoshop, um, whether the photo is real or Photoshopped. And then this last one is interesting, bad news. Um, this one, you are creating a Twitter account as somebody who wants to spread fake news. So you're taking on that perspective and you're understanding fake news from the perspective of the bad guy, right? Um, and as you go through the steps, it's kind of an interactive story. Um, you gain credibility, which is that meter on the left, and you gain followers. So um, in this game, you're trying to gain as many followers as you can, and you're trying to understand how someone goes about spreading fake news. So a huge piece of this is um, understanding that even the name of someone's account impacts how believable they are. We have the first week's assignments that I've just highlighted there. Blog posts are published by me on Saturday onto our blog, which is the website I'm on right now. I want your blog to be written in full sentences. I want your blog to be proofread. Um, and you can always resubmit if I give you feedback and do not publish your blog, okay? We have this section on infographics. That's something that we're doing at the very end of our media literacy unit. We're creating infographics using Google Draw. This is your blog post number one assignment. Um, you're supposed to watch the intro to media literacy by Crash Course, and then you're supposed to respond to the video. It's about a 10 minute video, okay? So you're watching the video and you are responding to the content of the video in a blog post. There's my catchy title, What is Media Literacy Anyway? Um, in a blog post, you want your title to be catchy. There's my image attribution underneath that I photo. And there are my hyperlinks that I'm highlighting for you now. I have two. The hyperlinks make your blog post um, something called hypertext, which allows the reader to click and interact with your text. And then my blog post is 150 words, which is the minimum. The maximum is 200. Then I have underneath my response to myself, um, I have picked out a quote to respond to. Um, you'll later need to respond to another classmate's post. This is your blog post number two. Again, a video. Again, features of a blog post. I'm reminding you up there. And again, 150 words, a couple of hyperlinks, and a response. Blog post number three, very similar. A lot of videos in this uh, unit. Number four. Same thing going on. All of the blog posts are related to the content in the videos. That's super important. Um, this blog post number seven, I'll make a different video about, and we'll go over that a little later. But so far, all of the blog posts are just responding to content. So I did have a little bit of trouble here, admittedly, um, using my just my touch screen um, and trying to highlight that title for you. It's a little bit of a struggle to watch. I'm still struggling. I'm still struggling. I accidentally right clicked. The keyboard keeps popping up. It was very frustrating. Now I've finally highlighted it. Um, this is your blog post template. I'm asking you not to title your blog post number one. Okay? Um, I'm asking you to come up with a title for your blog post that will draw the reader in. And I'm also showing you how to insert your image into your template. So I'm uploading from my computer. When I click insert, I've got the cat image there, but that's not quite enough. I need to copy and paste the attribution license at the bottom. Okay, which I did already copy that attribution license when I looked up the image. If you do not find the attribution license, I will not include the image with your blog post. So the idea is to type your blog post and replace that text, 150 to 200 words, not including the title, of course.
Thank you, Grade 6, for watching today, and um, I can't wait to see what you write. Don't forget to check out the Google Site blog. It's on our Google Classroom and all other materials, and I cannot wait to see what you post the next two weeks. Bye.